From time to time we get questions about abstract and this particular one says can you do more abstractions especially semi-abstract landscapes etc. And uh, she, uh, uh, this person also added um, perhaps landscape and portrait. Well we'll look at landscape today but here's a bit more about abstract. To be abstracted means to be taken from. So when you're abstracting, you're not doing precisely realistic painting. Now there is this broad continuum between something that is totally abstract, having no images at all, to something that is what you might call semi-abstract, meaning that you can read the images, but they're more interpreted than they are described as the viewer is seeing them. Now, in order to be able to do really true abstract, you need to change your point of view. Not looking at the image for what it is, but looking at the visual elements within the image. Now, I have here an example from my sketchbook that I want to show you to show you what I'm talking about. I don't have a photograph of this, so it may be hard for you to see uh, what's in it because I did it from a setup, but it was a pair of boots. So first of all, right here, I'm simply looking at the value patterns I see. The value pattern in the background and the value patterns of the boots and, and the, light, the way the light and shadow is shining on the boots. And see, if you look at that, you can't really tell what it is. So that is really abstracted. Um, in this one, I'm looking a little bit more. You can, if you look real closely, you can see a little bit more of the images of the boot. But what you can see that's really creating that is not the image so much as it is the values. There are three values there. There are the shadow values where the shadows are obvious, evident. There are the light values, or I like to call them not in shadow values. The shadows, the values where the light is really strong. And then there are those middle values. So that's another way to abstract, abstract by values. Now in here, in, in this study, I did the values and the colors. So you can abstract by value and by color. Looking not at the image, but just the shapes of the values and the shapes of the co uh, and the colors that will, uh, that will define those values. And so you see what we did here. Um, I have light into light, so we have lost edges in here. So I have light from the negative space into light of the positive space. Different colors, same values. Have the same thing going on in here. Light in the negative moving to light in the positive, the same value, but different colors. And then the darks here. Uh, just defining the dark, the dark areas that I saw in the boots, and the middle values uh, you might see everywhere else. So that's one way to abstract. Now there are many ways to abstract. You can abstract by rhythm, where you're just describing the movement that you see. Uh, you can abstract just by shape, or by creating geometric shapes from the shapes that you see. There are multiple ways of abstracting. And if you'll look at, if you just go and look at the work of Pablo Picasso, from the time he started painting until his death, you'll see his multiple, multiple uh, ways of abstracting depending upon what kind of movement was going on during his lifetime. He's probably one of the most diverse artists as far as abstracting goes. So don't think this is the only way to abstract, but this is one way to get you going. So I'm going to do just a very short demonstration for you here. Now one of the best ways I know to get started with abstracting images is to start out with a no tan. A no tan, as many of you know by now, is a way of using just two values, dark to describe shadows and light to describe areas that are not in shadow. Or you might say dark to describe those things that are from say value 5 up to value 10 and then the light for everything else. Now uh, on this landscape I have done a no tan. Here everywhere you see gray is are areas that I have defined as in shot and areas that are in white are areas that I have defined as not in shadow. That's a good place to start when you're abstracted because then you have divided it into two values and then you can take that division of two values and pull it down into maybe three values 
and still get an abstraction. This person asked for semi-abstract, so semi-abstract would be if you can detect, detect what the images are, if you can read here what the images are, but they're not de described precisely as I would read them in the landscape. So I, I'm just going to do a very quick little deal here where I kind of show you how to approach that, or one way, one way to approach that. And if you can get started just with one way of approaching this, um, then maybe that will lead you to another step or another step or maybe you can ask a question in our comment section and I can ta help you take it another step. But to give an entire uh, quick tip on abstraction would take us several hours and I don't think you would still be with me by the time we finished. Alright, briefly, we have, we have shadow or we have dark and shadow areas here and we have not in shadow areas here. And so I'd like to start in the shadow areas first to build a kind of build a structure. So uh, since I since I would like to since I like to start in the shadow areas first, I would simply start out with a very dark green, and I would quickly. And I use and by the way, using brush strokes that help define the shape also helps with the abstraction. So very quickly, I would use brush strokes here to. Uh, brush strokes and a very very dark value simply to define simply to define that dark though where those dark values are and so you see I'm using just the green here for, mo for the moment just the green now I'm going to reach into some uh, blue and some uh, this is uh, ultramarine blue and the uh, red oxide uh, transparent red oxide to darken a little bit in here, but I'm using brush strokes that define the, the tree more or less as I pull that down. Now I'm seeing here shadows, uh, deep shadows as well. So I'm going to to uh, uh, get a little bit more blue in the brush. That's just a that's just a um, it's just a well a decision made uh, just to get variety. In this case, if you're abstracting, you're thinking more in terms of the two-dimensional surface then you are describing what's out there so I'm not going to talk about atmosphere and that sort of thing but so I will do this and I will simply lay the shapes in lay the dark shapes in uh, as I'm seeing them now I have carried those dark shapes over so um, over to this area right here now here I would do the same thing lay those dark shapes in and pretty much give them a kind of that organic edge that we see that those dark shapes have but you notice I'm talking in terms of visual, visual observation, not the image itself. I'm talking in terms of the shapes that this is making, the values that are being created, um, the brush strokes um, that are, def that are uh, creating those values and those shapes, that sort of thing. But um, I'm, I'm avoiding looking at it as tree or as bushes, simply defining or just simply describing value and color. Alright, so I'll do that and I'm going to bring this over and I'm going to connect those right here a little bit. Um, I do see a little bit of a dark here connecting those, but I'm going to connect them a little bit more uh, than I'm seeing there because that then visually connects that dark shape. Now I'll go directly before not doing any defining or anything. I'll go directly to the lighter shapes and very quickly uh, define I see uh, two light shapes here, a large light shape and a smaller light shape. The smaller light shape is a little lighter than the larger light shape. Now you notice the language I'm using. I'm not describing trees and I'm not describing landscape. I'm describing shape and uh, more than shape and value. Or I could be describing shape, value and color. So I'm saying this one is lighter than this one. So I will go into a very light a very light color of blue. I could say this is a little lighter blue than that one. And I want that to be a little bit grayer than I'm seeing. Uh, Alright, so so I would then, now that's way too dark. So that ended up being more, more of a middle value than it did a light. Okay, this is better. Now I'm just going to describe that. Just lay these brush strokes down in such a way that they describe this light shape. That's all I'm doing. Not calling it anything. Not calling it sky. Just calling it a light. That light shape. 
And see if you can learn to think like that, where you're not describing, not calling things by their label, but you're labeling them according to what they are in terms of vis visual language. Light shape, light blue shape, light neutralized blue shape. Now in this photograph, the photograph somewhat faded, the, um, the, this shape ends up feeling a little bit more towards, um, towards a, a little bit of an orange or light, low chroma, low intensity orange. It's a darker shape, but it's still light. Now when I'm saying light, when I'm describing the shape as light, I'm describing it as belonging into these light spaces that I've left here. Now see, I have left some dark spaces here. So those could be then middle value. Right, let's go now for that lighter shape. Now uh, I've, I've left less space here for that big lighter, big darker, darker than here, but still light shape than I have there. Now if you notice the, the format of this is different from the format of that. So I can change shapes around when I'm abstracted. I can change change things around when I'm describing things realistically too. Uh, so I'm going to go right in here and I still want that light. And if I put that down, is that light enough? Probably so. Give it a little bit more variation in there and simply lay it in. Now, okay, now that feels like it doesn't belong quite enough, so I'm going to add a little bit of the green into it. If you saw our uh, quick tip on mother color, there we go. So I'm at quick tip on mother color. Uh, you know why I'm doing that. All right, there we go. That makes that uh, a little bit more harmonious. I'll simply lay those shapes in and ignore the vertical things because they'll go in later. So just lay that shape in. Now you notice that what happens in this shape, as I'm laying it in, what happens in this shape is that as it comes down, it, as it comes down, it's getting darker. So let's get that part first. So you describe to yourself what you're seeing. So as that's coming down, it's getting darker. So as it comes down, I'll get it darker. So if I describe to myself what I'm seeing, that's what counts. There we go, right in there. Now I'll, I'll get that sort of gradated. I'm seeing that as a gradated shape. That too is part of the visual language. So you describe to yourself in terms of visual language, describe to yourself what the thing is doing. It's not so different from realistic painting. In fact, uh, we, we do the same sort of approach when we're blocking in uh, for realistic painting. No matter uh, no matter how realistic it is, if you make if you make a habit of doing this sort of thing as you're blocking in realistic painting, you'll be surprised at how much better, how much freer the painting will be. Now I'm going to do the same thing here because this is the uh, uh, same, same or similar color. That's a little bit darker, so I'm just going to block in this shape like that. Sort of block it in, and let's see what else is happening. This is coming down. I need to give this shape a little bit more of that same kind of color. And this shape ends up being lighter, so we will just make it a little bit lighter. Same color, but lighter. So I'll just do this like that. Now I have a basic block in. I have a basic block in of the dark, middle, and light that I'm seeing right there. Now, um, that is very abstract. This person asked for semi-abstract. So we'll take that one step further with semi-abstract. I'm, not, I'm not going to do a whole thing. I'm just going to show you just a little bit. For one thing, uh, the verticals of the trees. So if we see the, the verticals of the trees seem to be uh, on the dark side. So I would go into, uh, I, want, I want them more uh, grayer a grayer color so I'll go into the blue and I'll make it a grayer color and let's see now so I find out where is that tree I see it belongs about right here and I simply throw it in and where does it stop it stops right there okay and then I'll have another tree um that's a little bit lighter so you see I'm still describe I did say tree that time and I wish I hadn't because I wanted to keep this in visual language but still, we just call this a vertical shape. I need a different brush for that, and sometimes that happens. You need a brush that is capable of making the shapes that we're trying to make. A little bit more paint, and a little bit more brush. Okay, here we go. There we go, like that. And then we'll take that, get that next dark vertical shape. 
which is which is what I should have described the first one as. Okay, now let's see, and we want to do uh, the spaces should never be the same between them, so we'll just put this one a little bit closer here. And, and oh, that's a really neat thing because then that gets lighter as it goes in front, so that creates another nice little visual tension. And maybe we'll just uh, do a little bit more right over here with this one. And where does it end? They all end up about the same place. Okay, let's give that a little bit more dark. You see what I'm doing? I'm looking in terms. I'm looking at it in terms of its value, what what it's doing, its value, its shape, and so on. Now, I could begin to now look at variations for getting the semi-abstract, um, the semi-abstract feeling. I can begin to look now at variation. I'll do just a little bit of this, and then that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to leave it to you to take it further because you can take um, uh, approaching a, a painting in this way you can take it as far as you want to as far as the de definition uh, as long as you keep it loose and painterly then uh, it's, it's going to remain uh, semi-abstract so um, for example then I start looking at this shape and I start seeing variations in value and what that means is that there is some light that's hitting or uh, some ambient light that's hitting uh, some of those some of those uh, clusters of leaves and instead of trying to define that as leaves I simply define it as shape so we could do something like that kind of unite it in there and we bring it down just a little bit like this sort of like that all right then I would do the same I can do the same thing throughout where I begin to look for um, look for differences in values within the shapes that I have set up here and then I could continue and as I uh, define continue to define uh, where I see lights where I see darks that are within these larger shapes I can bring it to whatever level of realism I want it so if I wanted to keep it semi abstract then I want it just before or at some point before it actually becomes more of a descriptive painting and less of an expressive painting. Now, in order to also help you um, help you on this journey of abstracting or semi-abstracting, we have some other quick tips, and I also have a free video on the website. If you do not understand Notan, that is the first step towards understanding this way of thinking about abstracting. So if you'll go to dianemice.com, in the menu, click on Free Video Lesson, then I, I, I take you through two little mini lessons there of how to create a no tan. Then we have uh, three quick tips I think you'll find helpful. One is quick tip 217. It's called, it's called simplifying shapes. And another one is quick tip 166. It's called from real to abstract. Then the other one is quick tip 153 called painterly painting. So we'll put those links down below so that you can click them and, and get to them easily. So this is the this is just to get you started, as I said before. Uh, just approaching whatever you're looking at, not as images, but as visual language. First of all, as value, and then maybe value and shape, or value and color. However, whatever visual language you choose, and whatever feels right to you, and then you should be able to do abstraction that would please you and make you happy. Hope you enjoyed this quick tip. If you have questions or a suggestion for a quick tip, leave us a comment right down here in the YouTube comment box. And take a trip over to dyingmice.com and look at all the things we have there for you, including full-length video tutorials. And while you're there, sign up for our newsletter so you'll always be informed of our latest adventures. And thanks for watching.